Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. And in this video, we got ourselves the hottest Silver Age comics for the month of January. That is right. Another year, another month, and five more books to talk about that are really blowing up the charts. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps support the channel, doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let us get into this video here today. Now, of course, I will put a link in the description. This article is written by Ryan Kirksey, and these are the five hottest Silver Age books based on volume of sales and sudden increase in movement in the market. So think of these as the most liquid books that are out there right now. And this list is very, very interesting because it is all amazing Spider-Man. I mean, I've had videos where I've talked about you know, risk on versus risk off. And it seems like Amazing Spider-Man in a risk off environment is always going to be a good buy. And that is why I think we're seeing a lot of these books on here. And of course, the fifth book on the list that we got to start talking about is this one right here, Amazing Spider-Man number 66, up 39 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1968, written by Stan Lee and drawn by John Romita, and would feature that incredible Mysterio cover art. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to ASM between like issues number, you know, 40 to around 100, we got a lot of amazing John Romita art. And some of these covers are some of the best that there is in all of the Silver Age. And I think this one right here, outside of its first appearance, is probably the best book to get if you are a fan of Mysterio. Of course, Mysterio was played by Jake Gyllenhaal in the Amazing Spider-Man number two movie. And although it seemed like he died in that film, I'm still of the belief that no villain is ever truly dead. And we might see this character once again. It's been really interesting to watch, you know, some of the values of ASM number 13, which is the first appearance of Mysterio, and see that those books are slowly starting to recover. Of course, after the comic book boom, we've had a lot of pullbacks in the prices, but it definitely feels like the ASM books are generally finding their floor, and that ASM 13 in particular is starting to almost trend back up in a way. And it's interesting to take a look at some of these books because as I've been putting together my Silver Age Index, I do know that ASM number 66 is one of the books uh, amongst the 100 that is on there, and it feels like this book is always in demand, always being sought after. And I think why all these books are going to be on the list this week is that people are looking to you know fill out their runs once again. They're looking to the books that they actually just want to own in their collection. And Amazing Spider-Man books are always going to be in demand, always going to be popular, and going to be the most risk-off Silver Age books that you can possibly pick up. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. 1,482 universal copies on the census, although that doesn't mean that this book is you know more rare than other Silver Age books out there. It's just that this is a book that probably isn't going to be sent in for grading as often as some of the others. 9.8s have 44 on the census. Uh, uh, there was a 90-day sale at the $2,800 range. That actually doesn't seem too bad to me if you're talking about like a 9.8 for a Silver Age book in 1968. Down here at the 9.4 range, you see 130 on the census, 30-day moving 810, 90, 30-day moving 490. Six hosts have 73 on the census, 30-day moving is 160. And then down here at the bottom, you know, there's a handful of slabs for low grades at the 1968, you know, time frame. But generally speaking, you're not going to see many people buying those low grades. So when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, Typically, you can find them okay presenting ones being sold around that $70 to $100 range. All right, let's go on now to the fourth hottest Silver Age comic of the month. And the fourth hottest Silver Age comic of the month is another one that's kind of in the same vein as what we just talked about. But this one is Amazing Spider-Man number 47, up 44 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1967, written by Stan Lee and drawn once again by John Romita, that would feature the iconic Craven cover. Now, as we all know, later this year, we're going to be getting that Craven film in the Sony universe. And, you know, it's up for grabs whether or not that film is going to be good, successful, coherent. I mean, at this point, I'll take anything that is mediocre out of Sony. That's how much my expectations have been shattered uh, with their various movies. But we do have the Craven film coming along, and a lot of the Craven books have had some market attention on them, like this one here as well. Of course, like I was saying with the Amazing Spider-Man run, all of these books are always going to be in demand simply due to the fact that, you know, there are so many amazing Amazing Spider-Man collectors that even outside of movie spec or iconic cover art, people just need these books to finish their runs. And here in 2023, I think we're going back to runs. We're going back to, you know, holders and collectors who want to finish those things. And this is just going to be one of those books that, you know, you have to check off the list if you're going to do the first 50 books of ASM or the first 100, or maybe you're a mad madman and you're going to go all the way to 700. But of course, Craven, one of the most iconic Spider-Man villains, will be interesting to see what happens with him after this film. 
you know, we've seen Marvel comic books take a lot of characters into this kind of anti-hero position. It wouldn't surprise me as we get to later in the year if we start to see, you know, Kraven miniseries and things like that where Kraven is actually like a, a villain gone good. Now he's a hero in current comic books. And if the movie is successful enough, the, if the movie is popular enough, you never really know with what we might see with this character in the future. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. This one has 1,695 universal copies on the census. 9.8s have 20, and the 90-day movie for them is 6,600. So definitely a book that is a lot more pricey than the Mysterio one, which is interesting. Not sure if that has more to do with the spec value or if it has to do with the fact that this is just a book that came out a year sooner. 9.2s, 30-day moving, 509. 8 30-day moving, 282. And then 6.0, 30-day moving is 150. So the numbers start to get kind of more in line to the Mysterio book as you go down the grade level. And then down here at the bottom, I'm not going to see it always slapped the low grade either. But when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically you can find them being sold around that $60 to $80 range. All right, let's go on now to the third hottest Silver Age comic of the month. And the third hottest Silver Age comic of the month is another one that feels like it is the same ilk as the previous two we've been talking about. But this one right here is Amazing Spider-Man number 45, up 44 spots, which was actually tied with the Craven book. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1967, also written by Stan Lee, also drawn by John Romita, that would feature the third appearance of Kurt Connors, The Lizard. Now, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys will know that The Lizard is absolutely one of my favorite villains in Marvel comic books. He is certainly my favorite uh, Spider-Man villain, I'd say next to Dr. Octopus. And in my humble opinion, this is just an all-time great Lizard book. I mean, I think, like I've been saying with some of these other characters, it's really interesting to see that, you know, you can get value out of second appearances and third appearances for Spider-Man rogue gallery villains, uh, more so than that of any other, you know, villains that are out there. I mean, if we think of like second appearances of Juggernaut or second appearances of, you know, the Sentinels and things like that, certainly those books command some type of value. But the ASM books are the king. You know, the ASM villains are the king. And those are the ones that still command value. And here we are talking about a third appearance of Lizard. I mean, it's surprising that CGC would even put, you know, third appearance of Lizard on a CGC label. That just goes to show you how many collectors still value uh, this particular character, this particular ASM run. And, you know, it's, it's not very often that you would see that notation on a CGC label, but lo and behold, you get it for this one right here. Like I said, with a lot of the other books, these are just classic ASM books. A lot of people looking to collect these things, finish their runs. And that is probably one of the reasons why in this current climate that we're in, these books are showing up on the hottest list. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look and see if the values are any different than that of the previous ones we saw. 9.8s have 21 on the census. So similar census here, one year moving average is 4560. So, you know, hard to say if that number would be correcting today or if that number would be continuing to trend upwards, but definitely a little bit lower than the Craven book and certainly higher than the Mysterio one. Uh, 9.0s have 160 on the census. 30 day moving is 504. 70, 147, 30 day moving 172. And then 50, 30 day moving 129. So you have that sort of price uh, compression when you start to get to the mid and low grades of this book. And then of course, when you go onto eBay looking for raw copies, typically you see them being sold around that $50 to $70 range. All right, let's move on now to the second Honda Silver Age comic of the month. And the second Honda Silver Age comic of the month is a big boy. This one, of course, is one that has been very sought after in the market. A lot of people showing off their copies of this one. A lot of people, you know, maybe trying to capitalize on the hype for this one. But this one, of course, is Amazing Spider-Man number five, up a whopping 58 spots. That's how much this book has been in demand recently. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1963, written by Stan Lee and drawn by Steve Ditko, that would feature the Doctor Doom cover in the ASM run. Now, of course, this is a top five Spider-Man book. Obviously, this is always going to be one in demand. Doctor Doom is probably the most premier Marvel villain there is. He is always going to be in demand. But let's first talk about why this book might be showing up on the list this week and why it jumped so many spots. Well, of course, we're coming off of the heels of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever film. There was a lot of speculation that Doctor Doom was going to be showing up in that film. In fact, it has even been kind of talked about that maybe there was, in fact, a post credit scene and then it actually got cut because they were like worried about, you know, introducing Doctor Doom when they kind of wanted to close the chapter on what happened with Chadwick Boseman. So it kind of makes sense that they didn't want the story to be about Doctor Doom. 
and that's why they cut the scene. But for that reason, you know, there was a lot of people talking about all of the Doctor Doom keys in the months of November, December, and leading into this current year. And a lot of people were, you know, buying up those Doom keys, looking to sell them, looking to capitalize. And this is one of the big ones that a lot of people were moving. I mean, of course, you know, Doctor Doom is sort of inevitable to be coming to the MCU at some point. Uh, we will certainly see him. We will certainly get a lot of Doctor Doom keys continuing to have, you know, their uh, moment in the sun once again. Uh, but even outside of all of that, this is going to be a all-time classic Spider-Man book. I mean, I think when we're talking about, you know, top 20 Spider-Man books, they're, they're always going to be, you know, commanding premium values. And then when you get to top 10, uh, those are going to even escalate even more. And then when you get to top five, they escalate even more. And of course, this one is in that spot. And speaking of those values, as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look here. 2,545 universal copies on the census, which goes to show that this is actually a book that is slabbed a lot more often than those previous ones. 9.8s only have one on the census, but there hasn't been a sale in quite some time. 9.6s have 10 on the census. You can see the one year moving for that was 17,500, but I do think that that would be a number that would be a lot higher because as you can see, 9.4s have 15 on the census and the 30 day moving for that was actually 21,000. This is one of those books that actually hasn't had a similar trajectory to a lot of the other ones, you know, with the comic book boom. This little price spike right here actually came all the way back in 2019. So typically speaking, this is a book that has been kind of on a slow and steady increase uh, over its time. Uh, 6.0s have 158 on the census. 30 day moving for that is 2819, which again is higher than that of the one year moving. And then down here at the bottom, you know, 3.0s have 266 on the census and the 30 day moving kind of right around the $1,000 range sitting at 968. And typically speaking, when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, that seems to be pretty true with me where, you know, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a raw book, sell for less than that 700 to $800 range. All right, let's move on now to the hottest Silver Age comic of the month and the hottest Silver Age comic of the month is a very interesting one to talk about. Very surprising to see this one on the list, but again, rounding out the top five with another ASM classic. This book right here is, of course, Amazing Spider-Man number 12, up 84 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, it's the book that came out in 1964, written by Stan Lee and drawn once again by Steve Ditko, that would feature the third appearance of Dr. Octopus. Now, not really much else to say about this one other than the fact that, like I've been saying with all the other books, it's an ASM key. People are going back to what they want to own. People are going back to the classics, you know, the greatest hits. And of course, these top 20 ASM books are always going to be desired by collectors in the market. Of course, this is the moment when Spider-Man gets unmasked by Dr. Octopus, which is kind of a classic story moment as well. And it's great to see this one on the list. A little bit surprising as to why why this book specifically is climbing up these charts. I mean, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, everyone is looking towards all the spec books, you know, all throughout the last year. Everyone has their eyes on certain places. And then eventually, you know, as those things start to, you know, kind of putter out, people look back to the classics and they think to themselves, hey, ASM 12, that's a great book. That's a cool one. I just want that one. And all of a sudden there's a flurry of people looking to buy those things because you know how it is. Once you see one of those books on your watch list on eBay get bought up, then you start to see two of them, then you start to see three of them, and then you start to panic because you're like, oh, that book that I actually wanted to have is no longer available. I better move fast and get the one that is still online. So a lot of people kind of, you know, causing that own sort of self-induced FOMO in this particular market. And that would be my reasoning and suspicion as to why this book is the hottest comic of the month. And as we dig into the numbers, let's take a look at some of the values here. Uh, Universal CGC census has 1,800 copies on it. 9.8s have five on the census. Fair market value is 17. 500. One year ago, there was a sale at the $16,800 range. But, you know, here in the high grade, you're seeing a lot of holders, not a lot of sellers overall. Let's go down here to the 70 to where we can see the 30 day moving. 121 copies on the census. One year moving is 885. 30 day moving is 749. So a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a correction, like a lot of the Silver Age books. 5.5 has 100 on the census, 30 day moving 490. And then down here at the bottom, you see a lot of movement right here, which I think, you know, this is an indication to me that that a lot of people are just, you know, seeing this as a book that they just want to have in their collection. They don't need to have that high grade. They don't need to have top of census. So they just want to get a copy. And that's sort of why you see, you know, a 4.0 selling for $300 in the 30 day moving. And then a 2.0 also selling for roughly 
around three hundred dollars at two seventy seven in a thirty day moving, and then you see a two five selling for one sixty nine in a thirty day moving. So this is sort of an instance where you see that kind of price compression, price consolidation, because a lot of people just want this book in their collection. And of course, when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically you can see them being sold around that. 125 to 200 dollars price point depending on the deal depending on the grade and depending on what you can find anyways that's all for this video those were GoCollect's hottest silver age comics for the month let me know what you guys think do you guys have any of these books asm seems to be king are you guys asm collectors drop me a like comment subscribe if you're enjoying the content and i'll see you in the next video